Welcome to the Tech Today podcast with your host, John Mayetta. We're not going to let technical difficulties stop us today. We have an update on the bank term funding program note that we published earlier this week. That data, as you may be aware, is as of Wednesday of each week. The Federal Reserve releases it on Thursdays after the close at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. We typically publish our note on, on Thursday evening. And by the way, if you're not a subscriber to the, the premium Tech Today offering, which is $9.99 a month or $99 a year, you can get, I'd say, 95% of our content for free if you follow us on Substack. And then what happens is after a week, that content goes behind a paywall, which you have to pay $9.99 a month or $99 a year to, to access. But for that first seven-day period, the content is is free. For for 95%-ish of what we publish, it's it, it's free initially. So back to the bank term funding program, March is going to be kind of the month to, to keep an eye on for, for markets, given what's going on with the bank term funding program. So the, the Fed, again, this week, it reiterated that on March 11th, the one-year anniversary of the bank term funding program, it, it's going to allow the program to expire. So that means that troubled banks they'll no longer have that crutch to rely on. What they'll have to do is go to the Fed's discount window. Now, the discount window has been around, you know, since the Fed's been around, not as favorable as the bank term funding program in that under the bank term funding program, so the rate was always a, a little bit less than the uh, the rate at the discount window, the, the, the borrowing rate that the Fed charges banks to borrow. But in addition, under the bank term funding program, banks could go borrow under that facility and have have the uh, the the asset the debt asset that the bank is using as collateral have that asset marked up to par value and then borrow at 100% margin against that collateral and that's a big deal because if you recall many of these banks what they did as I've been writing and using Bank of America as an example is they gorged on debt so they went out and bought debt securities when Fed funds rate was at 0%. And then as the bank, uh, rather as the Federal Reserve has ticked up interest rates since since May of 2022, you know, given the in the inverse relationship between interest rates and bond prices, the, the, the debt that these banks acquired is now trading below par value as rates have come up. And so when, when banks go to borrow, under the BTFP, you know, they have the wonderful experience of being able to, to mark up the value of that debt to 100% of par value. So it's a real gift that the Fed is providing those banks. So when the bank term funding program expires on March 11th, banks are now going to have to go to the, the Fed's discount window. They're going to have to take a haircut on those debt securities. So they're not going to be able to borrow as much on that very same piece of collateral as they could borrow today under the BTFP. So the, 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 the banks, by definition, are going to have less liquidity. And so, you know, theoretically, if you have another situation similar to, to March of last year, when depositors rush to a bank to make withdrawals, and if the bank doesn't have that liquidity on hand, it has to go to the discount window, they're going to get, you know, less liquidity at the window, and therefore they're going to have less liquidity to uh, offer depositors. And, and same for, for, for loans. There's just going to be less liquidity uh, insofar as banks are concerned once the bank term funding program goes away. And of course, we have we have had a little bit of distortion under the bank term funding program over the past uh, four or five weeks as the borrowing rate on the BTFP fell you know, way below the Fed funds rate. So what banks were doing is there was sort of a risk-free arbitrage opportunity. They would borrow under the BTFP, take those borrowings, take that cash, and uh, deploy it in a short-term instrument and earn, uh, you know, 5.5% risk-free return on that uh, on that money. And and you had an, an arbitrage opportunity. And the, and the Fed sort of took that away uh uh, on Thursday, they marked up the borrowing rate on the bank term funding program to 5.4%, which was just a shade below 
the uh, primary borrowing rate at the discount window, which was 5.5%. So they, they, they narrowed that, that Delta and, and shrunk that arbitrage opportunity. Um, so what's going to happen, and I'll just, I'll toggle over to our note here. What's going to happen is when the bank term funding program expires on March 11th, you're going to see borrowings under the, uh, the Fed's discount window spike. So th this chart here, see if I could expand that. Not much, uh, but but this chart is barring under the Fed discount window. You can see that initial spike in the uh, 08, 09 time frame. That was the uh, great financial crisis. So banks went to the discount window to find liquidity. The next spike here is sort of uh, uh, COVID. And then this this big one, the largest spike of all, was was March of 2023, when we had a a, a run on the banks and the banks had to find liquidity. The bank term funding program hadn't yet been rolled out and uh, it peaked at, I think it was 152 billion is this peak here in, in March of 2023. And so I would expect to see uh, another uptake in borrowing at the discount window in March of this year, once the uh, bank term funding program is allowed to expire on March 11th, in, in the note I quoted, uh, you know, the, the, the current level of borrowings under the bank term funding program is 2.8 billion. I said we could see a multiple of that pretty quickly, 20 or 30 x. That's just a rough guesstimate. So it's 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 my view that these banks are under pressure. That's not to say every bank's under pressure, but there've got to be a number of banks, given the enormous amount of unrealized losses on their balance sheets, uh, these banks without the BTFP are going to suffer. Even with access to the discount window, they're going to have less liquidity, less liquidity to extend to customers. It's going to slow down the economy. And the only way for these banks to sort of get out of the bind is another bailout. You know, the Fed discount window is not going to be enough. And I think you're going to get that bailout. It's not going to be BTFP part two, but what's going to happen is the Fed, in my view, is going to lower interest rates pretty aggressively. And that will reinflate the asset value of those debt securities that the bank scores on when rates were at 0%. So it's going to narrow the loss. It's going to meaningful, meaningfully narrow the loss on those bonds which will enable the banks to then extend uh, more credit because they want to have the risk of these massive losses on, on their balance sheets. We saw some of that in December at the last FOMC meeting when Powell talked down rates. And then we had the banks report on, the big banks reported on January 12th. And you could see that those losses, losses had begun to narrow. Since then, yields have ticked up. So one would expect that those losses have now started to, to grow again. And the only way to really get rid of it is to get rates um, close to zero, if not back to zero. I hope you don't go there, but between a $34 trillion treasury debt level and these massive losses on, on bank balance sheets, even though at the moment they're largely unrealized, it's still a big risk to the system and the Fed's going to help it go away. That's why the Fed's there to, to play babysitter. That's all for now. See you next time.